Crazy Gadget is the nightmare stage. Any stage can kill a run, but this stage is a run killer through and through. It's the final massive hurdle that will test your grit and ability to execute under pressure, which you'll be feeling a lot of when this laid into a run. I'm going to start with the skipless route. The beginning movement is simple, but takes a bit of practice to get right. You'll start by holding down right and tapping B to light dash immediately. Keep holding B and turn a full circle counterclockwise to give the door enough time to open, and then you release the spin dash. Keep going, and here we're going to super bounce to avoid changing the gravity back. While falling here, homing attack on time or a bit early to guarantee you enter the next section instead of getting stuck. If you get stuck, you can only leave by super bouncing. Once you land here, jump forward and homing attack to break the glass. If you happen to fail, don't panic because there's a chance the camera will become incredibly confusing. Either bounce back to the higher platform and do a second attempt, or do this, which is accomplished by just jumping and holding forward. After hitting the spring, hold directly down until you land, and while you wait, why not charge a spin dash? You can use the spring here, but super bouncing gives you a higher freedom of movement and makes it faster. This checkpoint is wonky, so make sure you actually hit it if you want to be safe, and when spin dashing to cross the gap, avoid being directly next to the rail, that is of course unless you want to test your reflexes here. Choose the center gravity switch. We're going to be falling towards the exit of this room. The fall is pretty scary because there's no collision above the exit, but there is a kill plane, which causes the annoying possibility to land inbounds and still die. Anyway, I call this guy the No Fear Chaos, because if you try to avoid it, he's almost guaranteed to hit you. Instead, you'll want to go directly towards him as he attacks. While falling, homing attack bouncy ball buddy over here, and spin dash jump to skip past the enemies. If you want to avoid dealing with a mid-air light dash, the spring works as well. After taking the tube, begin tapping B in preparation to light dash as soon as you enter the next section. Get the flame bracelet by either using the gravity switch and holding down, or you can have a bit of speed, do a slope jump, and homing attack into the flame bracelet if you want to be cool. The trick to getting this is you actually don't want an enormous amount of speed as you'll end up hitting the ceiling before you can get enough distance to reach the upgrade. A bounce excel is more than enough. Quick addition! I forgot to teach you about bounce excels in Pyramid Cave and I have no idea how. Uh, basically what you're trying to do is bounce and then homing attack before you touch the ground to get a boost of speed. It's a super fast way to get up to speed again and you'll use it a lot, so please practice it. Jump around the corner and charge a spin dash on the slope. Release the spin dash with the neutral stick, unless you were planning to do a U-turn. Continue normally through the stage until you end up at the three chaos. Hit the first with a spin dash jump and homing attack the other two. Once the door opens, you'll see this perilous path with circling spike balls and an enemy guarding a door. This section was always scary and felt impossible when I was a kid, until I realized you can skip all the precision platforming by just doing a spin dash jump. Please. Do not use the gravity switch here. It's only for the chow box and wasting your time. Instead, just spin dash jump over and somersault into the left robot and continue on. Once you reach the puzzle section, there are two common ways to skip the puzzle. The easier and less technical route is to jump from purple onto red, change the gravity back to normal, and fall hoping to hit the switch that unlocks the rocket. You can use the collision of the gravity switch to make it to the other switch if you fail. From there, go back on the ledge you're standing on and do a spin dash jump holding upright. Hit the rocket and wait for the rocket to hit the acid unless you want an embarrassing death and you're done. Or you can do the second route where after hitting the switch use this light dash and store a spin dash. Using the knowledge I taught you in the pyramid cave tutorial make sure Sonic is facing the wall correctly and super bounce onto this platform. When I was first learning I hated this super bounce. I actually realized it's not too bad if I use these lines on the ground as a guide. Once on the square shaped platform, we're going to spin dash jump underneath the rocket platform. From here, if you pass this orange line, no matter what you do, Sonic dies. But you're training to become a cold heartless monster that values saving frames over any moral or ethical issues, so we're just gonna let it happen. Stand roughly in the middle of the platform and walk Sonic into the orange line. He will fall through the platform dying, but hitting the goal ring. Hitting the goal ring has the highest priority, so you'll end up completing the stage instead of losing a life. And congrats! Sonic is dead! But you finished the stage fast! There is, however, a powerful 
whole skip that allows you to finish the stage in under 45 seconds. When entering the giant room with three switches, you're going to choose the left one now. This is where we're going to be performing CGSS or Crazy Gadget Skip Skip. It skips the previous major skip, which I personally believe has become obsolete now that we know so much about CGSS. I'm going to be talking about my preferred way to do CGSS, but know that there are quite a few different setups with one that's been picking up steam called Box Hover, but since I can't get it to save my life, I'm not the proper source to teach others. So to set up CGSS, after you land, you're going to want to start a spin dash jump somewhere behind this line to jump over a camera trigger, which will make the out of bounds section much, much easier. Reach this ledge and tap jump to land on it. On this ledge, you're going to fully charge and do a spin dash jump. But to where? In between two kill planes. This might help in visualizing what I'm trying to accomplish with why I'm moving the analog stick the way I do, but basically I'm spin dash jumping to get under the top kill plane and immediately leveling Sonic out so he doesn't drift into either of them. If you don't die, that means you're past the hard part. Now just hold an angle similar to this and because you skipped the camera trigger, you're able to see Sonic and where the goal ring is to make adjustments. When falling, you have three ways to increase your distance to make sure you can reach the goal ring. The first is, assuming you didn't hold jump and instead tapped it, you can do a pause hover. A reminder, that's done by pausing, then unpausing with A and holding it for a second. If you still need more, you can bounce, which instantly decelerates Sonic, and if that's still not enough, your last resort is to do a homing attack cancel. Of the major strats in this game, this one took me the longest to learn. Thankfully, there's a a lot more knowledge surrounding the skip and now there's even the free cam version which I wouldn't say that makes the skip beginner friendly by any means but it is certainly more accessible than it ever was. If you're wanting to learn CGSS keep track of how many attempts it takes before you get it once. It took me 1217 lives to get the skip a single time. Let me know how many it takes you. See if you can beat me. Uh, speaking of see if you can beat me here are the times you're trying to aim for. 25 seconds for this checkpoint. CGSS takes about 50 seconds, and then here are all the times for CG without the skip. Realistically, it will take a while to get it under two minutes, and you might actually learn CGSS before then. If you're serious about improving your Sonic movement, this stage is incredible. If you can get it down to one minute and 46 seconds skipless, then you can be confident you understand all the ins and outs of Sonic's movement. Anyway, thanks for watching, best of luck on your speedruns, and have a good day.